Welcome to Fun Facts Daily, your source for just the good stuff. Monday through Friday, we're bringing fun facts and news you can use, all carefully curated to uplift and inform. So give yourself a break, relax, and learn something awesome in just a few minutes every day. Hi everyone, I'm Kyle Wood. Today we'll be learning all about the fascinating and powerful phenomenon of lightning. But before we get into the facts, let's warm up our brains with a little challenge to see if you can tell truth from fiction. Consider this. There's that old adage, lightning never strikes the same place twice. You've probably heard it before, maybe as a way of saying that a rare event won't happen again. But is that true? Is there any actual scientific basis to this idea about lightning never striking the same place twice? We'll find out at the end of the episode. Now for your word of the day. Our word for today is fulminology, F-U-L-M-I-N-O-L-O-G-Y. Fulminology is the scientific study of lightning. It's a specialized branch of atmospheric science, and scientists who study it are called fulminologists. They work to understand how lightning is formed, its different types, its physical properties, and the effects it has on our environment and technology. It's a field that combines physics, chemistry, and meteorology to unravel the mysteries of one of nature's most spectacular displays. The word comes from the Latin fulmen, which means lightning. The suffix ology comes from the Greek word logia, meaning the study of. So literally, fulminology means the study of lightning. The word fulminate also comes from this same Latin root, and it means to express vehement protest or to explode violently, which perfectly captures the intense energy of a lightning strike. Time for your daily high five, our top five fun facts about lightning. Number one, a single bolt of lightning is hotter than the surface of the sun. The air around a lightning bolt can reach temperatures of about 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 30,000 degrees Celsius. To put that in perspective, the surface of the sun is only about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 5,500 degrees Celsius. This incredible heat is what causes the air to expand explosively, which in turn creates a sonic boom we hear as thunder. The light we see is the electricity superheating the air particles in its path until they glow. This extreme temperature is reached in just a few millionths of a second. It's this rapid and intense heating that's responsible for much of lightning's power and danger. The heat can instantly vaporize the sap in a tree, causing it to explode, or fuse sand into glass, creating unique formations called fulgurites. It's a stark reminder of the immense energy packed into what looks like a fleeting flicker of light in the sky. Number two, lightning can produce its own form of antimicrobial molecules. When lightning flashes, its intense energy can break apart the nitrogen and oxygen molecules in the atmosphere. These atoms then recombine to form new molecules, including nitric oxide and ozone. These compounds are known to have antimicrobial properties, meaning they can neutralize certain viruses and bacteria. It's like the storm is cleaning the air as it passes through. This natural process is a key part of the Earth's nitrogen cycle, which is essential for life. The nitrogen compounds created by lightning fall to the ground with rain, acting as a natural fertilizer for plants. So while a thunderstorm can be intimidating, it's also performing a vital function for the planet by cleaning the air and feeding the soil. It's a beautiful example of how even the most seemingly destructive, powerful forces of nature can also play a constructive role in our ecosystem. Number three, there's a place on Earth that experiences over a million lightning strikes per year. High in the sky above Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela, a nearly continuous thunderstorm rages. 
This phenomenon is known as the Catatumbo lightning, and it occurs on average up to 300 nights a year for hours at a time. The storm is so consistent and bright that it's often called the Maracaibo Beacon or the Everlasting Storm. In total, it produces an estimated 1.2 million lightning flashes annually. This unique weather event is caused by a perfect storm of local topography and climate. Wind blowing across the lake and surrounding swamps picks up warmth and moisture. When this air meets the high mountain ridges of the Andes that surround the lake on three sides, it's forced upwards, rapidly cooling and forming thunderclouds. And interestingly, this almost constant storm isn't just a stunning natural wonder. Because it's so predictable, the nightly light show has also served as a navigational aid for sailors for centuries. Number four. An American park ranger was struck by lightning a record seven times and survived them all. Roy Sullivan, a U.S. park ranger in Virginia's Shenandoah National Park, holds the Guinness World Record for being struck by lightning more times than any other human being. Between 1942 and 1977, Sullivan was officially hit by lightning on seven different occasions. These strikes resulted in various injuries, including losing his big toenail, having his eyebrows seared off, and burns to his shoulders, legs, and hair. Statistically, the odds of being struck by lightning once in your lifetime are already incredibly low, estimated to be around 1 in 15,300. The odds of being struck seven times are astronomical, leading some to wonder if there was something about him that attracted the strikes. Sullivan himself seemed to believe it, once remarking that he felt like he had to carry a lightning rod with him wherever he went. His incredible story shows both the unpredictable nature of lightning and the resilience of the human body. And our fifth and final fun fact for today... Lightning doesn't just travel from the clouds to the ground. While the classic image of lightning is a bolt streaking down from the sky, it can actually travel in multiple directions. The most common type is cloud-to-ground lightning, but there's also ground-to-cloud lightning, which is often initiated by tall structures like skyscrapers or radio antennas. In this case, a liter of electrical charge travels up from the ground to meet a downward traveling charge from the cloud, completing the circuit. But it doesn't stop there. Most lightning actually happens inside the cloud itself, a phenomenon called intracloud lightning, which causes the sky to flash and light up from within. There's also cloud-to-cloud lightning, where a bolt jumps between two separate clouds. Scientists have even discovered mysterious colorful flashes high above the thunderclouds known as sprites and elves, which are types of electrical discharges that reach towards the edge of space. It turns out there's a whole light show happening that we often miss from our vantage point on the ground. Now for some news you can use. When it comes to lightning, safety is key, and here's a great tip to remember. It's called the 30-30 rule. This rule helps you gauge your distance from a storm. If you see a flash of lightning, start counting the seconds until you hear the thunder. Since light travels much faster than sound, this delay can tell you about how far away the strike was. For every five seconds you count, the lightning is approximately one mile away. If you hear thunder within 30 seconds of seeing lightning, the storm is less than 6 miles away and you should seek shelter immediately. The second 30 in that rule is just as important. Once you're in a safe shelter, wait at least 30 minutes after the last clap of thunder before heading back outside. Lightning can strike from the edges of a storm even when it seems like the rain has stopped. Sticking to the 30-30 rule is a simple and effective way to ensure you and your family stay safe when a thunderstorm's in the area. Now for the moment you've been waiting for. At the beginning of the episode, I asked, do you think it's true that lightning never strikes the same place twice? Well, that one's a fallacy. 
Not only can lightning strike the same place twice, but some places are actually much more likely to be struck repeatedly. Lightning is always looking for the path of least resistance to the ground, which means it is often attracted to the tallest, most conductive objects in the area. For example, the Empire State Building in New York City is struck by lightning an average of 23 times per year. Similarly, tall radio towers, mountaintops, and even very tall trees are frequently targets for multiple lightning strikes. So, no matter how often that phrase is repeated, it is definitely not a fact of science. Now, I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about lightning with me today. Be sure to tune in every weekday for even more fun facts. Fun Facts Daily is an airwave media podcast. It was written, recorded, mixed, and edited by me, Kyle Wood. Thanks for sharing a part of your day with me. Be sure to follow Fun Facts Daily on your favorite podcast app so you can keep the good stuff coming your way every day. And if you like the show, please do me a favor and leave a kind rating, review, or just tell your friends about it. 